2 Thessalonians chapter 2. I'm going to start reading here at verse number number 9. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, beginning at verse 9. Here we have the Apostle Paul prophesying. And he speaks to the church at Thessalonica concerning an end time event. And it reads, it says, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. Praise God. Father, we thank you for the truth of God that is contained in the pages of Scripture. Open up our understanding that we might understand the things that are inscribed therein that we might be prepared for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we thank you forevermore. Amen. Again, we're coming out of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And we read verse 9 and verse 10. Praise God. If you look at verse 9, the Bible says, Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. Praise God. Amen. Now in this entire hour, the Bible teaches us that the beast of revelation is going to deceive the whole world. And one way he's going to deceive the whole world is through miracles. And these miracles will not be emanating from the Holy Ghost. But they will be emanating from demon spirits. Come on. Now you got to know that every miracle that you see, you got to try that spirit by the word. Come on. And how many know, amen, it's important that we try every spirit. It's important that we have what you call the spirit of discernment. Amen. And this is why it's important that them that are in the body of Christ in this last day possess the gift of discerning of spirits that is mentioned in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Because if we don't possess this trait within our being, then we will be deceived. Praise God. Now you need to know that every miracle that you see does not mean that came from God. Amen. Hello somebody. Amen. See, in this last day in which we live, we think because we see something supernatural that that automatically means that thing is our God. Amen. So we call a lot of things God today that is actually the devil. And we call some things the devil that is actually God. Come on, somebody. Praise God. But the Bible mentions here that in the end time, that the beast is going to perform lying signs and wonders, and he's going to deceive many. Praise God. Let's look at Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 13, rather. Revelation chapter 13. Glory to God. Glory to God. Revelation chapter 13. And I want to re start reading in verse 11. Revelation chapter 13, verse 11 says, And I beheld another beast. Now this beast is speaking of the second beast which is the false prophet that works alongside the Antichrist who is the first beast. Praise God. But the text says, And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb and he spake as a dragon. And he exercised with all the power of the first beast before him and causing the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first 
Ram was healed. And he poured great wonders so that he made fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And deceived them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast. Saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image of the beast which had the womb by a sword and did live. Now what you see here in verse 14, it teaches us that the second beast, which is the false prophet, he performed miracles, notable miracles, praise God. And the Bible says by these miracles, he deceived them that dwell upon the earth. Praise God. Now, somebody say, well, how do you know that miracle is not coming from God? Well, let's just, just read a few more verses of scripture here. In Revelation chapter 16, let's start here at verse 13. Revelation chapter 16 and verse 13 says, And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet for they are the spirits of devils working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of the great day of God almighty. Praise God. So we see in Revelation chapter 16 that it is identified that these unclean spirits that came out of the mouth of the dragon, the beast and the false prophet were the spirits of devils working miracles. Hello somebody. Amen. And this is why you can't believe any miracle that you see. Come on. I want you to know Let's start here at verse number 8. And the Lord spake unto 
unto Aaron, saying, When Pharaoh shall speak unto you, saying, Show a miracle for you. Then thou shalt say unto Aaron, Take thy rod and cast it before Pharaoh, and it shall become a serpent. Praise God. Now let me let me share this real quick. Do you see how God was speaking to his prophet? Come on. Hallelujah. And Moses, who was very sensitive to the voice of God, obeyed him exactly. Watch this. And the text says in verse 10, And Moses and Aaron went in unto Pharaoh, and they did so as the Lord had commanded. And Aaron cast down his rod before Pharaoh and before his serpents, and it became a serpent. Now watch this. In verse 11, Then Pharaoh also called the wise men and the sorcerers, now the magicians of Egypt. Now what you know these magicians had a name. They had a name, praise God. And the apostle Paul brings out their name over in 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 8. Their name was Janus and Jebridge. They were two of the magicians in Pharaoh's court. They were witches. They were warlocks. Praise God. Now watch this. Pharaoh said to the Egyptians that were in Egypt, the Bible says, they also did in like manner with their enchantments. For they cast down every man his rod, and they became serpents. See that? Come on. Satan copycat. Amen. What Moses did. Come on. Jesus and Jerry's by the power of Satan copycat the miracle that Moses performed by the power of God. Hello, somebody. Somebody said, well, if they both the same, how do we know the difference, praise God? This is why you got to have discernment. Come on. Then the text goes on to say here, watch this. In verse 12, it says, but Aaron's rod swallowed up their rods. Did you see that? Why did the Bible say Aaron's rod swallowed up their rods? To demonstrate that the power of God is greater than the power of the devil. Come on. Hallelujah. Does that make sense? And then it says that he hardened Pharaoh's heart, that he hearkened not unto them as the Lord had said. And the Lord said unto Moses, Pharaoh's heart is hardened. He refuses to let my people go. Praise God. Now let's jump down a few more verses. Let's look at verse 20. It says, And Moses and Aaron did so as the Lord commanded. Let's go back to another verse. Praise God. Let's go back. Let's go back to verse 19. It says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, Say unto Aaron, Take thy rod, and stretch out thy hand upon the waters of Egypt, upon the streams, upon their rivers, and upon their ponds, and upon all the pools of water, that they may become blood, and that there may be blood throughout all the land of Egypt, both in vessels of wood and in vessels of stone. And Moses and Aaron did so as the Lord commanded, and he lifted up the rod and spoke the waters that were in the river in the sight of Pharaoh and in the sight of his servants, and all the waters that were in the river returned to blood. And the fish that was in the river died, and the river sank, and the Egyptians could not drink of the water of the river, and there was blood throughout all the land of Egypt. And the magicians of Egypt did so with their enchantments, and Pharaoh's heart was hardened, neither did he hearken unto them as the Lord had said. Praise God. Now again we see how the magicians of Egypt copycatted the miracle that Moses performed. Why are you bringing these scriptures out? Because I'm trying to show you that the devil can work some miracles. Even though they are lying signs and wonders, I'm trying to show you that he can work some miracles. And you need to know that every miracle ain't coming from the Holy Ghost. Some miracles are being performed by Satan, the devil. And when people begin to believe the lie of the devil, what it does, it moves you right into his whistle. Come on. Hallelujah. Now watch this now. Let's go down a, a few more verses. Let's go over to the next chapter. In Exodus chapter 8. Praise God. 
Let's start here at verse. Let's start at verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, Go unto Pharaoh and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Let my people go, that they may serve me. And if thou refuse to let them go, behold, I will smite all thy borders with frogs. And the rivers shall bring forth frogs abundantly, which shall go up and come into thy house, and into thy bedchamber, and upon thy bed, and into the house of thy servants, and upon thy people, and into thy ovens, and into thy kneading troughs. And the frogs shall come up both on thee, and upon thy people, and upon all thy servants. And the Lord spake unto Moses, say unto Aaron, Stretch forth thy hand with thy rods over the streams, over the rivers, and over the ponds, and cause frogs to come up on all the land of Egypt. And Aaron stretched out his hand over the waters of Egypt, and the frogs came up and covered the land of Egypt, and the magicians did so with their enchantments, and brought up frogs upon the land of Egypt. Praise God. Did you see that? Again, they copycatted the miracle that was performed by Moses and Aaron, his servant. You understand? Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's jump down, praise God, in the same chapter of Exodus chapter 8. Praise God. Exodus chapter 8. Listen to the text here. Amen. In verse 16 it says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Say unto Aaron, Stretch out thy rod, and smite the dust of the land, that it may become lice throughout all the land of Egypt. And they did so. For Aaron stretched out his hand with his rod, and smote the dust of the earth, and it became lice in man and in beast. All the dust of the land became lice throughout all the land of Egypt. And the magicians did so with their enchantments to bring forth light, but they could not. So there were lights upon man and upon beast. Then the magician said unto Pharaoh, This is the finger of God. And Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he hearkened not unto them as the Lord had said. Praise God. Did you see that? Hello, somebody. Amen. Now I'm trying to show you something. Now the devil can perform some miracles, but they can't perform every miracle. Come on. They can't perform every miracle, but they can perform some miracles. Are you listening to me? Now in our foundational scripture, the Bible teaches us that in the last days, the beast is going to come on the scene and he's going to perform lions, signs, and wonders. Hello, somebody. For what reason, Pastor Walker, to deceive the masses? Are you listening? Did you just read over in Revelation chapter 13? He said, all that dwell on the face of the earth, amen, will be deceived by the miracles that are performed by the second beast. Come on. Are you listening to me? Even now in the church world, we have a lot of forerunners of the beast that is coming. Just as Jesus Christ had a forerunner. Come on. And we all know who the forerunner of Christ was. His name was John the Baptist. What was John the Baptist doing? He was preparing the way for the Christ that was coming behind this ministry. Well, guess what? Before the beast come, amen, he's going to have forerunners prepping the people, amen, priming the people for the beast that's coming. This is why the church world is populated with false prophets. And you know what they're doing? They also are performing lion signs and wonders. Yeah. Amen. What is it doing? It's prepping the people and priming the people for the beast. So when he comes, it's going to be easy for them to receive him because they're going to think this man is going to be your God. Come on. Hallelujah. And this is why it's important to have a relationship with God. And how many know it? If you're going to have a relationship with God, you've got to be born again first. Come on. You can go to church all day, every day. That don't do nothing for you. You've got to get in Christ. You've got to get the new birth. Come on. You've got to be back the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody. So that you can enter into covenant with God through the blood of our 
to what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. Praise God. Matthew chapter 24. Glory to God. Beginning here at verse 24. Now I want everybody to know that Matthew chapter 24 is a prophetic chapter. Jesus deals with many end time events in Matthew chapter 24. And one of the things he brings out in verse 24, he said, For there shall arise false Christ and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Then he says in the next verse, he said, Behold, I have told you before. In other words, I warned you. He's warning you of what's coming. He's warning you what is actually coming on the scene. But when people are not taking heed, then you have uh, set yourself up for deception. Come on. Now he's going to tell us these things. He told you what was going to happen before it ever happened. Come on, ain't that some good news? When God tells us what's going to happen before it ever happened, it gives you time to prepare, right? And anybody who refused to prepare, then you have prepared to fail. You have prepared to be deceived. Come on, instead of escaping the clutches of the wicked one that come to bring destruction upon your life. Amen. Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's right, praise God. You got to be very careful in this hour. Now, he, he warned us in Matthew chapter 24, verse 24 through 25. Amen. And because many people don't really pay attention to what's going on, we find ourselves like them that were in Samaria. Remember, praise God, the Bible says in Acts chapter 8 that there was a man named Simon the Sorcerer. He went to a city called Samaria. And the Bible said there he bewitched the whole city with his sorceries. Come on. Amen. And guess what? Even though the whole city was bewitched, the people said that this man is the great power of God. Ain't that what we do in the church? We'll call a false prophet, a false apostle. Come on, we'll, call, we'll say they are men of God. We'll say they are anointed. And yet they have a demonic anointing. Come on, they got a demon spirit. Come on, working through them to bring the people in their bondage. Are you listening to me? Hello? Praise God. Yes, that happened in Acts chapter 8. You can read it for yourself. Amen. Simon was a sorcerer. He was a false prophet. He was a witch. A warlock. Are you listening to me? Amen. Through his uh, demonic ministry, souls weren't getting delivered. People were being vexed with demons. Come on. They were being vexed with demons up under his ministry. People weren't getting healed. Come on. They wasn't getting healed. People weren't getting saved. They weren't getting delivered. But, amen. The scripture says how he had the whole city in bondage. But they said, this man is the great power of God. Yeah. Ain't that what they do today? Oh, he's so anointed. You know why? Because he sound good. Because he give you the chills. Come on. He make uh, chill bumps uh, go up and down your spine. So you think that's God? Come on, somebody. Because it sound good. Why can't you hear it? Come on. You gave an erection. And the people said, this is the voice of a God and not of a man. See why we have to have discernment? Come on. See, discernment come two ways. Number one, you got to have knowledge and understanding. 
spirit. You know when they lay hands on folks, they may fall backwards. And there's always somebody behind them that catch them. See, that was God. Why do you need somebody to catch you? They let somebody There was not one person in the scripture that was slain by the slain in the spirit. But I can show you some people who were slain by the spirit. Because the word slain means to kill. There were people that God killed in the scriptures. There were never anybody slain in the spirit, but they were slain by the spirit. Come on, all oh, they're falling out. Girl, that's the power of God. People in the congregation talk about look at God. And that ain't God at all. Because when I see people talking about into their presence of God, in second 